And we welcome you to Ray Etzler Gymnasium here at Crestview High School. Big matchup in the Northwest Conference set for you tonight as the 2-0 uh, Pirates of Bluffton in the NWC have come to town to take on the Knights of Crestview who are trying to stay alive in the Northwest Conference race. Hello again, everyone. With Miles Holiday, I'm Randy Roberts, partner. Looking forward to what should be a good one here as we see some of the top teams compete in the NWC tonight. Wow, Randy Roberts, where else would you rather be than right here, right now? Big game for Crestview. Got to get a win, right? It's kind of a must win. Great basketball in front of us, and I get to do it with the mayor of North Northwest Ohio, Randy Roberts himself. It's going to be fun. Well, let's uh, dive into these two lineups. Let's take a look at the Pirates of Bluffton. As we said at the top of our pregame, coming in at 2-0 in the NWC, 8-1 overall. You see their starting lineup, their lone loss was a five-point game to Ottawa Glandor, 45-40. to And boy, do they have a good one-two punch on offense. Yeah, they do, but unfortunately, we don't know if we're going to see that one-two punch, right? Word is uh, Merrick Donaldson might not play here tonight. And if he doesn't play, that's a huge loss, 16 points, four rebounds, and he's also dished out 34 assists. So if he doesn't play here tonight, they're going to have to figure out who's going to carry that scoring load. Donaldson had a 36-point effort earlier this season in the game in which he can do. 9-3, so a big shooter. If he can't go, that is a big spot, like you said, try to fill in this lineup for the Pirates. Yeah, not just nine, but a school record nine, right? Duke can deal it from a long way away. And they fill it up as well, 67 and a half points a game while allowing 41.8. Yeah, and they out-rebound their opponents also. They, they got a couple guys that uh, really do a good job in that low block. They have 14 at rebound margin over top their opponents. They're gonna have to really rely on that here tonight. Well, let's talk a little bit about the Knights of Crestview now at eight and four, one and one, like we said, in the NWC. So really kind of behind the eight ball. If they want to get that win, we'll take a look at the Crestview lineup under veteran head coach, Doug Etzler. This is a team that's kind of struggled through the uh, second uh, part of the season. They've gone two and three in their last five games. Yeah, it all starts with Bren Sheets, doesn't it? The big fella inside, uh, six foot six, the junior, 15.7 rebounds a game. He's good defensively also with 16 blocks. Randy, the most impressive thing about him though, his shooting percentage, just not at the free throw line at 67%, but he shoots 74% from the field. He is a big time scorer, number 33. He gets it done for Crestview. And it seems like just about every game that the Knights are involved in is a close one. And that take a look at the uh, scoring margin. They're scoring 51 a game while allowing 48. Yeah, so you, you know you got to be really good in uh, tight games. And if you're going to be really good in tight games, you got to take care of the basketball and you got to make your free throws. This is a really good shooting team hitting 46% from the field. And we should also mention where they're going to be in action on Saturday night as they've got uh, uh, this one, obviously an important one, but uh, what an opportunity they've got tomorrow night. Yeah, you love the movie Hoosiers, don't you? The movie Hoosiers is fantastic. Well, they're gonna get to play in the Hoosier gym tomorrow. That is a fantastic opportunity to get to play there. Somewhere a kid is gonna say, coach, I'll make it. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna take on Cincinnati Purcell Marion at uh, Hoosier Gym, so looking forward to uh, that one. So we're looking forward what should be a good one, Bluffton and Crestview, and we'll have it next for you here on WOSN. <laughs> Randy and Miles back with you here from Ray Etzler Gymnasium in Crestview, getting set for this key Northwest Conference matchup. Time to take a look. Some keys to the game in this one. Partner, let's start with the visiting Bluffton Pirates. Yeah, how about the Pirates? Number one, pump Arr. and go when you're on the low block. Make sure you use the up fake. Try to get those uh, post defenders of Crestview in some foul trouble. Number two, starters in waiting. We talked about Merrick Donaldson probably gonna sit out this one a little bit under the weather. Who's gonna pick up that slack? Those starters in waiting, guys on the bench, who's gonna be? Someone's gotta step forward. And the number three, remember the great Will Smith song, summer, summertime, summertime. Well, it's, it's summers and summers time, both of them tonight. They're gonna have to be big in that low block. That's Blake and Brody. They're gonna have to do a solid job inside for the Pirates. And what'll be some keys to the game tonight for the Crestview Knights. Hey, this is a really good three-point shooting team from Bluffton. So make sure you challenge that arc. Bluffton hits it at a 36% clip. 
make sure they don't get those shots off. And number two, Ren ran away. Hey, how about Ren? He was fantastic. We highlighted him in the pregame. He's got to be good here again tonight. 15 points, seven rebounds, 16 blocks, 74% from the field. Dude is legit. He's got to have to be good here again tonight. And then number three, the Convoy National Forest. They are big inside, partner. The National Forest is going to have to be good again. They can put out 6'5", 6'6", 6'3", and 6'4". The big fellas, they're like a forest here in Convoy. So looking forward to what should be a good one here tonight. I'm not sure if those are just throwback uniforms that Crestview is elected to wear or if that's a new look, but that should be a permanent look somewhere with those red, white, and blue unis. Yeah, red, white, and blue, always a good look. And of course, Bluffton, good look too with the red and black. I love the blue shoes by Crestview. This is gonna be a good time here tonight. So we do see that uh, Merrick Donaldson not in the starting lineup. So we don't know how much or if he will see any playing time tonight. As the tip is won by the Knights and we are underway. So Bluffton and Spencerville come into tonight 2-0 in the NWC. Allen East at 1-0. Crestview along with Grove and Lipsick trying to stay in the race at 1-1 as the first bucket is going to be a nice little runner in the lane. Uh, he got a great screen by Jarrett Harding at the elbow. Great opening possession. Good first look by Crestview to get the lead. It's Kellen Putman who's able to get that first bucket and now a good defensive stance as Jared Harding able to get a block and here come the Knights with the early lead. Sheets get it off to the wing for Harding. Harding sends it for Tommy Hefner top of the key. Well, that's what happens when you take it into that Crestview National Forest. A lot of limbs inside. Here's a look inside, a little kick out. Good ball movement early on. Knights didn't like anything, they'll reset the offense. Bluffton playing man to man, but running themselves into screens. They got to do a better job of communicating early in this game. After it turns down the three, gets into the paint. Tough shot, hits off the side of the backboard, but just throwing up the opportunity was Ren Sheets off the offensive rebound, but that's going to be no good as it hits off the top of the backboard. Oh, I'm sorry, was that Connor Sheets? Yeah, 44, Con not 33. Yeah, quick trigger on that one, wasn't it? Might have been looking for a foul. Now the Pirates set on offense. Taryn Boblet had it momentarily. Number four for the Pirates as the three is no good. Long rebound tracked down by Connor Sheets. Here come the Knights once again. Taking their time. Still up 2 0 in your scoreboard tonight. Brought to you by Webb Insurance Agency, who's serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. There's a wing jumper, good look, hits off the heel of the iron. A Sheets to Sheets fighting for the rebound, and it's Ren Sheets who's able to put the put back up and in. Yeah, Ren Sheets just goes to the weak side. Second opportunity, gets both hands on a great job of fundamentals. And then Randy, he didn't bring it down. He finished finished high and finished strong. Might have to teach a camp how to do that. That's one of the things that seems lost in today's basketball with the big men. Of course, more of them want to play like guards and play out around the perimeter as well. A good dish inside. That one is going to be blocked, but we're going to get a whistle and a foul. That's yeah, John Paul Yoder. He must have listened to our keys because you know what he did? He used the old pump fake. Give it a little show. Bring it back down, get the hands in the air, get yourself to the free throw line. Nice job by one of the best names we've had this year, right? John Paul Yoder. And he's going to shoot two free throws from the Lee's famous recipe chicken free, th free throw line. Easy for me to say. Lee's famous recipe chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphos, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all of your catering needs. Lee's famous recipe chicken where home style happens here. Both of them hit off the heel of the iron. And it is the Knights with that four nothing lead, able to bring the ball into the front court. That winds up being a, a good foul committed by Crestview. Empty trip for Bluffton. It's Harding with it, now they get the lob inside to Sheets and we're gonna have a push and the Knights will have to inbound in the baseline. Yeah, that's Bricker, kind of gets caught directly behind Sheets. You gotta pick a side if they're gonna lob it and you're directly behind, get your hands off because it's an easy call by the official. 
Now off the screen with it is Putman. He'll get the swing around. Three is going to be no good, and Carey Wright comes down with a miss for the Pirates. Still looking for their first points of the evening. Down 4 nothing. We played three minutes. Wright thought about the three. Here's a loose ball rolled all the way through the paint, and Crestview will come away with it. Hefner trying to get into the paint, gets the kick out. They want to work it around. Now he gets the basketball back. Entry pass comes in to Connor Sheets. Nice little fake and the pivot, and he's able to score. Uh, great big man fundamentals inside. You don't have to be super quick, just got to be super efficient, and that was Connor Sheets. It's his first bucket of the night, so, so far it's Crestview, three different players with the basket. Knights lead this one 6-0 as we near the halfway mark of our opening quarter. Yoder gets the kick out. He couldn't find anything he liked inside. Sumner's had it. They'll give it into the corner. Ginther trying to go baseline. Lost the handle. Sure, if he thought someone was on the opposite side, at any rate, it's a turnover. And it's going to be end up being a basket as Kellen Putman is going to score, and we're going to get a timeout. 3.58 left to go opening quarter. 8-0 Crestview. Our timeouts tonight are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Timeout on the floor. We'll step aside as well, watching high school basketball on WOSN. Eight nothing, Crestview with the early lead. That's caused Bluffton to take a timeout as the Pirates trying to get to going offensively. And now foul. This one's going to go on Hayden Parrott as he's going to obstruct. Yeah, great move by Ginther. Quick little crossover. And he got uh, Parrott in a bad position. And during that timeout, you wonder if Todd Boblet went to his guys and said, "Hey, pregame's over. We got to start playing, fellas." A little bit slow out of the gate, and you got to wonder if it's because Merrick Donaldson. They're trying to figure out still what to do without the big score. And I know what you shouldn't do. Bring it inside against Mr. Wren Sheets. And Wren sends that one back, so give him a block early on. And block number 17 on the year for Wren. Not, not a lot he doesn't do well, Randy. Tough turnaround. He had to go the opposite way. That's Blake Sumner's. And that puts Bluffton on the scoreboard here. Three and a half minutes to go in our opening quarter. Well, you got to believe Summers are going to have to come up big here tonight if Bluffton's going to win. Now we're going to have a hold away from the basketball. This is going to be called down on the low block. It's going to go on Landon Worcester. Yeah, if Bluffton is going to get back in, this down by six early and win this thing, it, Blake Summers probably will have to carry a little bit more of the load, 14 points a game and five rebounds on the average. Trying to do something with the basketball in the paint. There's a good kick out. And the baseline jumper is good as Kellen Putman stepping up big with six points early on here in the opening quarter. Already the third time Crestview has caught Bluffton with a screen that just locks them up. You better be aware when you're getting a, a screen set on you against uh, Crestview because they will knock some chicklets loose. Three from the corner, opposite side for Bluffton. That's going to be no good. Boblet had the look. Ball is going to be taken away at midcourt. Pirates another opportunity. Pull-up jumper. That one's again good. So Blake Summers stepping up. He's got a couple quick baskets. Yeah, great move by Summers. One on three. Rick recognizes it. Doesn't try to go all the way to the hole. Just a little pull-up game. 10-4 turning down the three that time. Hefner, he'll drive the lane, and he's able to get in and score. And Hefner off to a good start. His ability... To move the, with the basketball has been big for Crestview early. Hefner becomes the fourth different player for Crestview to score, and now he will commit a foul on the other end. Just a little too close defensively as we see changes for each team. Yeah, it's good to challenge out on the perimeter, but be smart about it, right? Mm -hmm. A guy is 20 feet away and he's dribbling. Don't bump him. He's not going to pull up and shoot from there. Be a little bit smarter. No need to pick up a, a little nickel and dimer, as our good friend Bill Raffer used to say. 12-4 here in our opening quarter on our scoreboard brought to you by Web Insurance Agency. Two minutes now left to go in an opening period that's been controlled by the Knights. And now Bluffton 
with a turnover. He'll give it back to Crestview. He'll bluffed it in Division Three, trying to get over that hump. Made it to the level of some of those top programs off a of screen. Christian Jumper top of the key is going to be good as Kellen and Pudman, the man stepping up early. Oh, the screens away from the ball are just killing Bluffton. Crestview dominating the physicality part. Dribble drive is going to be no good out of Wade Ginther. And now it's the Knights in transition. Had something momentarily. I go inside the sheets. Nice job saving that possession and getting another bucket. Well, what do you get when that big guy runs the floor? You reward him. Connor Sheets, great job, coast to coast. So after a couple of spin moves out of Summers, this time had the fake. Then they'll go inside. This time Brody Summers in the kick out. Three from the wing is a big one as Blake Summers hits another basket. Oh, a little release rotation and splash. Summers carrying the day. And hey, he's got all seven for Bluffton as the Pirates trail 16-7 on our way at Web Insurance Agency scoreboard. Offensive rebound is going to lead to an easy basket as Braxton Leith is going to find Connor Sheets who scores. The Connor Sheets, all he's doing is hanging out by the low block. Smart post player. So now 18-7. Good entry pass inside, trying to work the baseline. This ball is free, and it's going to be another turnover. I just bluffed and out of sorts, right? Summers isn't involved with a shot. They are just struggling to get anything cohesive offensively. Aiden Parrott has it right now over two Connor Sheets. Work around top of the key, back two Sheets. As Sheets' defender gets screened, and Connor Sheets has his eighth point of the night. And that is how the first quarter will go. Big opening quarter for Crestview. Knights lead this one 20 to 7, and we'll take a timeout here on WOSN. Well, when anyone hits a three-pointer like uh, Blake Summers did in that opening quarter, it is a Lodix Jewelry three-pointer. Uh, three Lodix Jewelry and Van Wert offers a wide variety of beautiful earrings, sparkling diamond rings, watches, name brand sunglasses, and more for that special someone. It also says on your Christmas list, but we well, might be past you that can, now. You can always on buy your a Valentine's head. Day list. Valentine's right around the corner. So 20 to 7. How about just because I love you? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah says the guy who's going to get married here pretty quick soon. Three-pointer, and there is the lot on cue, the Lottex Jewelry three-pointer. Well, that was shiny like a beautiful diamond. Bluffton needed that in the worst way. Gets it back to a 10-point margin. Pair it with this one at the wing. He'll send it over to Harding. Harding trying to get to the basket. He'll double clutch, and he's able to get the basket. That's just been too easy. Getting into the lane, either with a pass or a dribble drive. Bluffton, if they're going to get back in this, they're going to have to do a better job defensively. Ginther gets the kick out. Boblet will swing it around. Now Worcester with it. Wanted a screen, a little jump step. He'll just have it ripped away about Harding not having to leave his feet to come away with the basketball. Brings it into the front court himself, gives it off into the corner. Now the kick out and the extra pass. Leith with it, stops at the elbow. Now back out to Parrott. Crestview will reset the offense here. 6.50 left to go. Opening half on our scoreboard brought to you by Webb Insurance Agency. Serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. All right, about the fourth set that Doug Etzler has called for this Crestview team. Long lob in, but luckily Crestview able to avoid that. His sheets to sheets didn't quite work, but... Loose ball still goes Crestview's way. Still have it. Here's Leith inside. His runner doesn't go. Rebound is tipped in. Finally, Blake Summers at six foot five is just able to take it away from everyone. Boy, Crestview is so active on that offensive glass. Almost got another possession out of it. Summers with a left hand able to go up and in. He has nine of the 12 as once again, Bluffton trails by 10 on our Web Insurance Agency scoreboard. If he goes more than a possession without touching the basketball for a shot, Bluffton's living life the wrong way. Everything's got to run through Blake Summers. Don't get tired running around. Get tired shooting, Blake Summers. We're going to let you shoot all night long. Counter Sheets' attempt goes up and over the backboard, out of bounds. 
This one will go back over to Bluffton. How about that official? Uh, very reminiscent of Gene Hackman. Looked a little like Gene Hackman, didn't he? You know who else? Gene Hackman? Tomorrow at Hoosiers. You wonder if Coach Hoosiers Etzler. Hoosiers gym. Yeah, the Hoosiers gym. You think Coach Etzler went and bought a uh, Gene Hackman Ooh. mask for that? I don't know if he bought a mask, but. Maybe dress like him. Uh, oh, they already kind of do a little yeah. bit. Yeah. The uh, coat with the uh, knight as there's good work from that low block. John Paul Yoder will score for the first time tonight. Yeah, there's that sharp dressed man, Doug Etzler, right there. Boy, I enjoyed watching him play as a Buckeye back in the day on some uh, really good and some really bad Buckeye teams, but he always gave great effort. Big time score down for Columbus. Speaking of big time effort about John Paul Yoder and able to get the steal, how Bluffton battling back. Pirates trail by eight here with five to play. High arcing pull up jumper doesn't go. Good look out of uh, Taryn Boblet. And here come the Knights off the miss. Harding with it. Harding trying to get to the basket. That one thought was going to be blocked. It wasn't clean. It's going to be a foul. And it looks like we are going to see some Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. Yeah, watch Harding again. Just goes unmolested through the lane. But then when he goes up for the shot, that's when the foul occurs. All right, Randy, can you remember a time where Bluffton has just closed the door on anybody dribble driving into the lane here tonight? No. Yeah, that's been a problem, right? Mm -hmm. And thus, you look at the score down by eight. They're going to have to do a better job of getting in front of the basketball and playing tougher defensively. First free throw from Harding is no good. Second one, he'll leave that one short again. Free throws brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Duffos, and St. Mary's. The drive off the wing is going to lead to an extra pass. That ends up being ripped away. As Kelly and Putman working hard down on the baseline will force an inbound by the Pirates. Yeah, Putnam saved the day for Crestview because really good interior passing by Bluffton. Tough inbound pass comes in. The Pirates trying to get set. Summers pull up three. That's going to be no good. Rebound is tipped. Knights come away with it as they want to push with Harding. Harding gives it out to the wing. Putman from the baseline. That one is off the side of the iron. Handoff goes to Wade Ginther. He's going to bring this one quickly into the half court for the Pirates. Three from the top of the key. That one off the side of the backboard. Rebounds tipped up a couple of times before Harding comes away with it. Once again, Crestview is going to run. This time, looks like they're going to slow the pace down. Well, one of the things that Crestview has done is they've moved Ren Sheets over top of Blake Summers. A little bit more difficult for Summers to shoot over top the taller Ren Sheets. The aforementioned Sheets with the basketball. Had it knocked out of his hands, it's going to stay Crestview ball here halfway through this second quarter. It's got to be pretty cool to have a be called Wren and you're named after a whole town. The whole town's named after you, vice versa. It's got to be a pretty cool thing. Inbound is not going to be saved on the baseline. So Crestview will maintain here with 3.54 to go. See, so sure he's not... Uh, Named after a bird. All right, right, right. Or a radio station, W-R-E-N. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Sheets had him pinned inside. Crusty missed him. Gets it on this side, though. He'll lose the handle trying to figure out what to do with it. Boblet comes away with it. And the Pirates set up once again. There's a drive. That one couldn't go. Ginther just didn't get enough air underneath it as he got kind of pinned between a couple pieces of iron. Three is going to be left short as uh, Bean Ginther comes away with a miss. Hey, Chris, you've got to be a little bit careful here. And that's why. So Ginther able to knock that down again. Our three-pointers are brought to you by Lodix Jewelry in Van Wert, offering a wide variety of beautiful earrings, sparkling diamond rings, watches, name brand sunglasses, and more. Yeah, I was going to say, they got to be a little bit careful because they've dominated, right? But it was only an eight-point margin there. Now it's down to five. Don't want to let Bluffton get back into this. And here's the opportunity, trying to get his feet set. Looked like Kerry White right, wasn't quite sure what to do. Ends up getting the layup, and all of a sudden, partner, we're down to a three-point game. Yeah, Crestview was kind of giving away possessions with careless shots. And next thing you know, a, turn, a, a big three, then a turnover. And we're down to a three-point margin. Counter sheets at the elbow, gets the kick out, calls for it again. He's being guarded pretty tough inside there by Carey Wright. 
It looks like Wright's going to commit the foul, and Connor Sheets is going to head to the free throw line. I like the fact that Connor Sheets didn't pass it back out. Recognize that he had a physical mismatch on that low block. Gave him a little shake and bake and then spun back to the baseline with that right hand. Gets himself to the free throw line. Free throw on its way. That one is good by Sheets. That is the first made free throw of the night for uh, either team. And again, a free throw tonight brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphi, St. Mary's. Call Lee's for your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. How about Connor Sheets looking like Rocky Balboa and Rocky won there? Cut me, Mick. Tough dude, man. All stitched up, all taped up, all bandaged up. He's still fighting. Whatever it takes to get me out there to play. Worcester thought about the uh, stepping into that three. Said gets it out for uh, Brody Summers, the uh, brothers Summers back into the lineup now for the Pirates. 205 and counting left to go here. Opening half on our Web Insurance Agency scoreboard. See this lead down to four. Worcester lost the handles. That one's going to be reached in. We will get a tie up. And unfortunately, with our vantage point, can't see who's got the arrow. See, not only does Miles point, but looks like someone at the table does as well. It's going to go to Crestview. One thing that is really evident, man, if you were careless with the basketball against Crestview, you're going to have a bunch of hands on it, aren't they? They are quick to the ball. Well, Bluffton really did not want to give away a possession there. Putman has been held scoreless here in the second quarter after getting eight, goes high off the glass, but can't get it to go. Worcester behind him for Ginther. It's Bean Ginther. Have that one ripped away as they tried to go inside to Summers. And now same thing on the other side. However, a whistle, and we're going to have a foul inside. Now, yeah, Landon Worcester, he's not going to agree with the call, but when he watches film tomorrow, he's going to say, yeah, I did. He got caught behind and allowed Sheets to dictate wherever he wanted to go. When you play a guy like Connor Sheets, you have to step over and take away a half of the body. If you play directly behind, He's just going to dominate because of his size. Wherever he wants to go, you're, you're in peril. Crestview is going to go sheets for sheets. And off the inbound, good luck <laughs> off the window. Jared. Jarrett Harding able to score. Yeah, kind of caught Bluffton off guard. Just an easy post exchange from block to block. One of the oldest inbound plays ever. Bluffton was napping. Now 25-19 as we near the one-minute mark of our uh, fairly Quick moving opening half of basketball. Here's one poked away. Good job defensively there by Braxton Leith will force Bluffton to inbound. Look, if Bluffton can keep it the six and below and go in at halftime, Todd Bobley can say, guys, we were awful in the first half. We we're only down by six. Got to be careful of this last minute. You don't let Crestview get a couple steals and stretch it back to double digits. The pull up jumper off the wing. That is going to be good. Taryn Bobley able to score for the first time tonight. Now this is one of the things that we highlighted, right? Bluffton, a really good perimeter shooting team. Got it back to four again. Sheets able to draw the foul from the low block. It looks like he is going to get a couple of Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. Now Brody Summers just gets caught, not moving. Nice little spin move by Sheets. Gets himself to the line. Great thing about Sheets, if you're Crestview, just a junior. So you get him back for a whole another year. Next down, the first free throw gives him three points tonight. Randy, I'll say he's, he's probably not done growing. Take a look at those battleships that he has for sneakers. They got him listed 6'6". Six, six. Second one stays out as he hits the iron just a little too tough. Now a chance for Bluffton to again cut into this five-point lead. Get there with a handoff for Boblet. Boblet will swing it around to the right wing. This is Summers. Summers into the corner. Back out. Boblet trying to find someone. Nothing there. He'll unload from deep. Can't get it to go. And Crestview with it. And we'll see what the Knights do in the final 30 seconds of the half. Yeah, Coach Etzler calling to his guys. I do believe they're going to try and run this down. Popping out to the wing. Ren Sheets. He'll give it to the top of the key. Comes around to Parrott. Off the ball fake, Putman. Another ball fake, Leith, he'll fire away. Can't get that to go. Rebound in the corner, Summers. He's gonna try to dribble through a double team. That's all he can do as the horn will sound and we have reached the half. 
So Bluffton, after being down 13 after one, is able to battle back, make this a game. 26-21, and we will have a timeout here on WOSN. Hey, back here at the half, 26-21, Crestview with the lead over Bluffton. Pretty good uh, basketball game, but we're going to take a break from basketball and uh, kind of an odd day to talk about baseball considering some of the weather going on outside. But long time, Crestview baseball coach Jim Morton joining us now. Coach, 600 wins, a nice honor for you uh, between the uh, JV and varsity games. And uh, I guess uh, congratulations and I talk a little bit about the, the honor of hanging around to get 600 career baseball wins. Yeah, thank you very much. It, it is. It's humbling. Um, you know, you, you have something like this, and it it's certainly involves a lot of people. You know, you have to have great people. You have to have great players coming from great families. Uh, you got to have a great coaching staff, and you have to have quality support from your administration. And we've, we've, we've been blessed to be able to have all of that. And uh, you, you get a, a, a high school, is there, do you feel like you got pretty good job security with a, a high school principal like you have <laughs> and a guy as a, as a former player that's going to stand up for you? Yeah, yeah, I think so. You know, I, I think it originally against uh, Continental when Dave played, I think if, if we had the pitch count, I, I would have been in trouble because it was snowing and I threw him over the pitch count. But he's forgave me for that. But, yeah, Dave just does a phenomenal job. Uh, with the administrators and uh, just like all the ones that we've had, you know, I mean, I came came here right out of high school and I'm just so thankful and blessed that they took an opportunity on a young kid right out of high school or out of college. Right. It, it, coach, it, coaches just aren't good by themselves. It takes that family structure, doesn't it? How important was your family to you and your success uh, on the diamond? For my personal family, yes. yeah, my, my family, my wife is, you know, they talk about coaches' wives. And, right. Uh, only, only two of my boys were here. My two daughters weren't here. Uh, so, yeah, she, she talking about uh, just what she has been, I, I wouldn't have been able to do it without her. Mm. And, uh, you know, she has always given me the blessing to, to coach. And when the kids got older, we would always have a, a – a, family meeting mm -hmm. and I'd set the kids down and I'd say all right do you want dad to continue and uh, because we live in Fort Wayne right um, and so it's been a drive for me so there's been a lot of times that it's been away from the family and uh, I just let the kids know that by the time I get home that's that's the most important part of my day and every guy that plays baseball and loves baseball identifies with that one big time major leaguer right who was that guy growing up that made you love baseball you know, there were so many. Probably Dave McNally for the for the Orioles. Okay. Um, I, I was I was fortunate enough. My aunt and uncle lived in Baltimore, and they lived right across the street from Dave. And uh, I still have a picture to this day where we we're out throwing catch, throwing balls. My brother and I. Uh, he took us to the uh, to the uh, to the ballpark. We got all the autographs from all the greats. And I kept that, and, and one of my boys, Riley, uh, when he was uh, not old enough to realize the importance of that ball, he was out throwing it in the yard. So, uh, you know, I had to show a lot of grace for him for that. <laughs> Hey, you, you talked a lot about your family and talk about the, the, the longevity. Coaches don't stick around long enough to be able to get 600 wins. So what is it that, you, know, you mentioned your family, but you know, you obviously you really have to love the game of baseball. To hang Some coaches aren't even lasting long enough to be in 600 games, let alone win 600. Well, you know, I first off, I'm a big tradition guy. So when I came, you know, I had Ray Esser, I had Dan Norris, I had Steve Keller. I had men that were that had been around the block, had been extremely successful, and I was smart enough as a young guy to listen and to pick their brain. Um, and then, as well as anything else, you surround yourself with the best people. And my coaching staff has been second to none. Um, you know, we, we, we've got in our current staff, we've got over 100 years of baseball coaching experience. That's fantastic. Uh, and and we've, we've, we just haven't had much turnover. Um, with our with our staff, we've had you know multiple guys that have came back and, and have coached for us. Uh, so that that speaks volumes about our culture and the things that they believe in. 
and uh, you know, and, and you know, with our kids, we never talk about wins or losses. We talk about working hard, uh, and if you work hard, it's going to potentially put you in a position to have success. Right. Uh, and the other part is is loving your teammate more than yourself. And if they do those two things, and that's that's you know something that that I'm going to to just demand out of our kids. They got to care about each other more than themselves. You brought up the word love, which you know that to me that goes hand in hand with coaching, right? That was a special thing uh, during the ceremony. The number of players that were on the floor, and I noticed you not only shook their hand, but you hugged each one of them, right? How important is that relationship that you have with them? You know, I just so many, so many people invested in me when I was growing up. I was fortunate enough to, to be at Snyder High School in Fort Wayne, and uh, you know. Russ Isaacs, Mike Hawley, uh, two Hall of Fame football coaches. You know, my parents taught me how to work hard. Um, you know, but you really have to love kids when you leave them. And I think it's so important that they need to understand that it's not about the wins and losses. It's about how we play the game, how we do things. You know, my faith is very important to me, and I hope that our program has been built on that faith, and our kids know that it's not phony, and that when I say I love them, I love them. And that doesn't mean I'm not hard on them, but I, I am going to definitely push the kids as hard as I possibly can. And, and some of the numbers, I, I was amazed. I was writing a few things down as Dave was going through some of them. 190 all-conference players and 19 All-Ohio wins. Wow. Oh, yeah, just... Like I said, just phenomenal kids, you know. And we have a lot of kids that were multi-sport kids, you know. And what what a lot of folks don't understand is our basketball program is phenomenal, and we usually get a late start. So, <laughs> right, right. Uh, th there's a lot of times you look back on our 2013-14 teams. Their first practice was was the game against uh, St. John's oh. that year. So we, we had seven starters that were playing their, their first game, which was their practice, after cutting down the nets in Columbus. Yes. So yeah, you're, it you're, just, just speaks volumes of the kids and right. the hard workers, and, and that's all, all at home. You know, Convoy is, is, uh, is just a unique, loving community. Uh, that you know they're going to do things right, but they're going to love on one another, and they're they're going to support one another, uh, and and it's it's really been a blessing to be here, Coach. If Randy and I stop out in the spring and we hit a home run at practice, will you take us out for ice cream afterwards? I will absolutely take you out for ice cream. <laughs> All right, Randy. We appreciate it, man. We're going to need that. Hey, you you mentioned it, guy. I, I'm from a similar sized high school, and what's it, you know you probably same thing. I'm going to guess 6 a.m. before school. End of the year, not non baseball guys, and you got like five or six of them, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's you, you get gym time when you can, <laughs> and it's six o'clock in the morning. Uh, you know the kids come in and they're they're dragging. I said, right. look, guys, I never like to talk about myself, but I've been doing this for 40 years. <laughs> you know, you can do this for four. Uh, right, occasionally, right. I'll buy them donuts uh, and some you know some chocolate milk to to. But, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it just is what it is here in Midwest. But I'm telling you, such great high school baseball is, is all around this area. Yeah. And uh, we're, we're, this whole area is certainly blessed with a lot of great baseball coaches, a lot of great baseball minds, and just some phenomenal kids that can just play the game. So enough in the tank for 600 more wins? We'll see. <laughs> I, I'm so out of breath just coming up here um, that that I'm going to have to lose about 60 pounds, and we'll take it year by year. Uh, well, hey, Coach, we appreciate the time. Congratulations on a big milestone. And, uh, Thank you. And, uh, and you know what? I want to tell you guys, WSN just does a phenomenal job, you know, and, and some of the things that are going on in today's uh, with, with how the college mill uh, money and people getting paid and, you know, this is the truest form of sport. It sure is. And you guys just do a phenomenal job, and we're always excited when we get the blessing to have you guys come over and do it. Thanks, Coach. Well, we appreciate it, Coach. Thanks okay. a lot. Thank you very much. So that is Jim Congratulations. Martin, head baseball coach here at Crestview. 600 career wins. We're going to see if we can sneak in a quick timeout and come back for the start of the second half here on WOSN.
All right, coming back to live action here as we begin the uh, third quarter. And partner, that was nice to have the chat with uh, easy Coach to, Wharton there, man. Yeah, easy to see his success, right? One question, let him go. Best interview you can possibly have. Yeah, just one of those guys, very personal. You can tell he cares about individuals. Lucky to have him here at Crestview. Mm -hmm. Spin doesn't go, and uh, good uh, friend of ours and fellow announcer. I'm seeing everything between the games there, and. Uh, Dave always has fun when he gets a chance to have a microphone in his hand as well. Nice uh, pregame ceremony there. Did a really nice job, didn't he? Did. Yeah, it's amazing that uh, Coach Wharton continued to coach after having Dave his first year. <laughs> the look inside, just rolling it off the rim and in will be John Paul Yoder as Bluffton continues to eat away at that Crestview lead on our Web Insurance Agency scoreboard. Yeah, JPY had a big bucket in the first half. None bigger than this one, though, cuts at the three. And now trying to answer with the three. That's going to be no good. Sheets fighting for the rebound. We'll get a tie up, and the arrow is going to stay with the Knights. And that JPY again with the box out, working hard against Ren Sheets. A battle of two physical guys and a low block. And the inbound's going to come in. We should mention with Coach Wharton, 600. I don't know, does it come with an asterisk if your 600th win? Kim comes in a 10 nothing game where it, you only had to go five innings. Uh, that's an easy one, right? That's the <laughs> one you want. You don't want it to be like a nine-inning, one-run affair. <laughs> playing 13 innings where it gets dark. you got to come back and play an oh. inning and a half the next day. Uh, spring sports, he mentioned, uh, spring sports are so much fun, right, just from the, the practice schedule all the way through. It, it's not a spring sport. It's a winter sport <laughs> until you get to the state tournament. This is a turnover now as Bluffton's going to come away with the basketball. Wade Ginther will bring this into the front court. The handoff is for Taryn Boblet. Boblet the give. Shimmy's trying to find something inside. Blake Summers reverses this back around. Boblet again will give into the corner for, uh, I'm sorry, it's not being Ginther. It's Carey Wright. Wright able to go off the window. Couldn't get it to go, but he's going to go and shoot a couple of Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. A good use of the left-handed dribble by Ren Wright. Uh, other guys are having to step forward offensively for Bluffton because Crestview, and rightly so, has figured out they got to really clamp down on Blake Summers when they have Ren Sheets on him. It's a better matchup for Crestview. First free throw from Wright rims out, and again, our free throws tonight are brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Duffus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all of your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. He's going to miss them both. Correct me if I'm wrong, that's the, the second time that they've had two free throws and they come away empty in this basketball game already. That is uncharacteristic. It's a 72% free throw shooting team for Bluffton. Both kind of look the same, but they just kind of rim out and trying to work hard down at the low block is Ren Sheets continuing to use that pivot. He's able to draw the foul, and now he will go and shoot a couple of Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. Yeah, if you watch Ren Sheets right there, you want to be a good free throw shooter, you know what he did? He went straight there, and now he's waiting for the ball. Got his right toe right on that dot. There's a little dot on the free throw line to line yourself up with, and it's all about the right-hand side. He gets his eyes on that rim, and he is just going to Dave and & Buster's and winning Papa Shot tickets <laughs> right there. Knocked down the first with ease to extend this lead to four. Left that one a little short. Didn't get enough air under that one. Now Bluffton able to bring this into the front court, trailing by four here with under five and a half to go, third quarter. Boblet trying to find somewhere to go with a basketball. He's got white jerseys all over him every time he touches the ball. This Crestview team so quick on the perimeter defensively. Watch how they slide and then they harass you with those hands. Again, they're able to get to the rack and score, and now he'll have a chance at a three-point play. Well, if you're getting overplayed on the perimeter and you get a step with your dribble, keep on going. And then when the convoy force comes, make sure you go through the tree limbs and finish. So Wade Ginther now with the opportunity to convert at the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. He will, huge three point play. Makes this a one point game, five minutes to go, third quarter on our scoreboard brought to you by Webb Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years. Yeah, our partner, Crestview, had 20 after that first quarter. They did. 
There's a look inside. Nice basket is Ren Sheets able to come through with a bucket. Yeah, Sheets, first one to the low block. A really good job of recognizing your post offensive player is free, getting the ball early, and better execution on the finish by Sheets. Yeah, for Crestview, it was 20 points in the opening quarter, six in the second. As getting on track now is Taryn Bobblet as he scores in the paint. Back-to-back uh, -back trips for Bluffton using the dribble to get to the lane. Speaking of the dribblers, Kellen Putman, he had a big game, uh, half. So far he'll get it out. That doesn't go. Sheets going to tip that straight up. Can't get it to go as Carey Wright out jumps him for the miss. A good two-handed rebound. Don't go up with one. Grab it with two and control it. Kinther goes out to John Paul Yoder as they work this around. Summers is going to step back. He'll let fly from deep. Hits the heel of the iron. Long rebounds fought for and a nice job on the hustle play. Taryn Boblet to come away with it as Bluffton wants to use a timeout. And our timeouts tonight are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. With that timeout, we'll take one as well. It's a one-point game here on WOSN. Twenty-nine, twenty-eight. Crestview, the one-point lead over Bluffton here. Three forty-nine left to go. Third quarter. Our Web Insurance Agency scoreboard long lob on the inbound, and we're going to see a foul called on Ren Sheets. Bluffton getting creative close to the basket. Well, Todd Boblet, he got control of his guys during that timeout, didn't he? Hey, pay attention to this dry erase board in my marker. I'm going to draw up something sweet, and he did. Got a high post lob to the weak side, and then a nice pass in the midair to JPY. Now, Run Sheets, he was arguing, though, a little litigating. He thought he had it clean. Gene Hackman said, no way, uh-uh. <laughs> Yoder able to knock down the first of his two Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. And he will hit them both. How about just, that? Just the second and third made free throws tonight for the Pirates, who find themselves up by a point, as it looks like they switched to a zone defense on this trip. Yeah, a little one, two, two, three, two, if you whatever you want to call it. But there's your weak spot to it, the high post. It's going to be tough to be very good with this with Ren Sheets playing the elbow down to the low block. And on cue, Sheets on the first effort, can't get it to go. But he will follow, gets the basket. He now has eight points. Yeah, he's kind of a jail out of free card, isn't he? If he, you can just throw it up to him in the uh, post, either the high post or low post, he can just go get it. Puts the Knights back in front here, 31 30s. We near three to go. Floater in the lane is going to be no good. Offensive rebound but comes out. Summers is now going to be tied up. Arrow's going to stay with the Pirates. Well, Bluffton was real lethargic in that first quarter, but ever since then, they have woke up. It, it started with effort, right? Mm -hmm. In the first quarter, it was all loose balls and dribble drives going Crestview's way. The Bluffton, since then, they have held Crestview to only 11 points since that first quarter. Trying to go baseline is Blake Summers. He's cut off, so he'll just have to turn around and the floater to put his team back in front by one. Now, you can tell your team all day long that he's left-handed, but once they step on the court, they forget, don't they? Mm -hmm. Putnam was playing him to go to the lane and just a little spin back to his dominant hand. It's 11 now for Summers. The Knights trying to make up the deficit. Three-pointer off the iron. Yeah, it's a nice battle inside once again. Brody Summers able to tip the rebound away, and the Pirates bring it into the front court. Worcester gives this one off to Ginther. Ginther is going to come inside the center circle where he flips it out to the wing as the Pirates reset. Count Ginther will swing it around. Here's Worcester with it again. Now the entry pass is going to come in. We're going to get a whistle and a foul. Now, early in this game, Wright was uh, caught behind Connor Sheets on a mismatch inside, but this time Wright recognizes that he has the mismatch with a smaller defendant, so he posts a little high-low action right there. Good find by Brody Summers that time. Second foul whistled on uh, Hayden Parrott. Also the fourth 
foul this quarter. So the next one put Bluffton in the bonus for the final minute 50 of our third. Pirates not in a big hurry with that one point lead. They get the kick out and this one's gonna be ripped away. So Braxton Leith will get the steal. Leith trying to bring it in the front court. Can't get it to go. All sorts of jerseys fighting for the rebound. This ball's loose on the floor. And it is Brody Summers who comes away with it, and he'll find the outlet. Well, every single loose ball seemingly going towards Bluffton right now. They're the ones that are initiating the contact. Everybody making a hustle play here. Minute 15 to go, third quarter. In our Web Insurance Agency scoreboard, you see 32-31. Pirates haven't led by much or long. Wrap around three in the corner is going to be off the mark, a little too strong. But another offensive rebound. Second opportunity from deep is no good. Connor Sheets holds it high as he gets the rebound as Crestview will bring it into the front court. Least three is going to be blocked away. A nice job defensively. Landon Worcester able to smack that against the brick wall. Yeah, watch him just hustle out of nowhere. Sprints down and gets the left hand of the law involved. And next thing you know, it's a block party weekend. So we will see. Crestview inbound, down one, 53 seconds left to go in our third quarter. Trouble with the handle there, Par Parrott able to get that one. Inside Sheets is able to get it off the window and in. So Connor Sheets, who had a good first quarter, has been quiet since then, comes up with a basket. Yeah, showed his athletic ability going and catching that one. Under 30 seconds now to play in our third quarter. Worcester through the paint. Tried to get his defender in the air. He will pivot around. Throws one off the glass. Can't get it to go. But the heads up play from the seated position there by Bean Ginther. I think this is going to wind up, unfortunately, for Bluffton as a foul on um, Brody Summers. Great anticipation, better steal. Summer's trying to go get it, but he's going to roll underneath a Crestview player for the foul. 15.3 yeah, left in this quarter. You're Doug Etzler. You pull it out and go for the last shot, don't you? Mm, I would. But then again, I wasn't the former collegiate basketball player at the Ohio, the State, University. Ohio State University. But you were one of the best players on that red team in Lions. That was baseball once again. And the pivot inside and the foul. There's the aforementioned, as you always like to say, Doug Etzler right there. If I remember correctly, loved the three ball from the right-hand side. How he must have just graduated a couple of years ago. Looks like a young guy. He does look young, right? Stays in shape. Guarantee he can still go out there and fill it up. So Ren Sheets able to knock down the first Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw. Miles is going to work his phone and look up the years that he was at Ohio State. Is that what you were doing? Well, I was going to look up his uh, career high. Oh, okay. So it's a two-point lead for Crestview. One more free throw coming here with 3.4 seconds to go in the third. Senior year averaged 16 a game, 91 to 95. It says here he went to Crestview High School. No. How about that? No. Well, Funny story behind that. So Sheets able to knock down both free throws. And if I'm not mistaken, isn't there currently an Etzler on the uh, basketball team at Ohio State? Oh, Kalen Etzler. After the steal, three ball at the horn is going to be no good. But Crestview able to battle back, take the lead, and it looks like we are going to have a good one. 35-32 after three. We'll take a timeout here on WOSN. Go! Thirty-five, thirty-two. Crestview with the lead over Bluffton as we head to our fourth quarter. As uh, Bluffton trying to stay undefeated in Northwest Conference play, two and zero in the conference. Crestview trying to uh, basically stay in the race at one and one. Good lob. They're going to find Jared Harding, who's able to score. Right, how about the throw inside? The pass inside. The nice touch by Connor Sheets. Harding now with six, extends that lead to five on our Web Insurance Agency scoreboard. 
A little hesitation move on the dribble drive. Carey Wright can't get it to go. Second effort doesn't go off the offensive rebound. Finally, Connor Sheets is going to wrestle it away from everyone, and he might have taken an elbow in doing so, and we're going to get a whistle and a foul. Well, this is a danger, danger, danger moment for Bluffton. Have they expended to too much energy? You know, they got that quick little lead that since then Crestview has answered. Got to respond again because the lead's back up to five. It's John Paul Yoder who committed the foul. That is his third. The Knights trying to uh, run out the time a little bit. Just over seven to play. Three-pointer on the way. Doesn't stick off the heel of the iron. Sheets gets it. Finds an open teammate in the paint, and it's Harding again. As Sheets to Harding seems to be working so far. Uh, Ren Sheets was blocked out on the low block. Wasn't going to be denied, though. Just hustled to the front side, out jumped everybody for that rebound. Now 39-32 on our Web Insurance Agency scoreboard. And now we're going to have a hold coming along the baseline. This is going to go to Kellen Putman. That's going to be his first. Team's first here with 6.43 to go. Bluffton will have to send the inbound up top of the key to Yoder, who will find a guard in Ginther. Now Yoder at that free throw line extended. Comes to Summers. Bluffton trying to be... As careful as they can be, they've cut into this lead once. Can they do it a second time? And that's a good start as they get a basket by Blake Summers. Uh, Summers uses the dribble that time to get himself free. A lot of the times tonight it's been a catch and release. They're going to have to rely on Summers to get back in this game down by five. Got a couple of stops early. Here's Sheets on the entry pass. Pivots around, puts it off the window and in. Yeah, just too easy, right? Going to have to either double or do a better job, maybe front him. They don't allow him to get position because Ren Sheets is automatic. Yeah, Ren Sheets down with 12. Here's one knocked away. A nice job defensively by Harding. Force an inbound. It's going to allow the Knights to make a couple of changes as Braxton Leith, Tommy Hefner will head back into the lineup. Parrott and Putman will sit down. Ren Sheets thought he was being subbed out as well and then gets a little help from his coach. Tell him to stay down. Yeah, good, good move by Doug Esler, right? If I'm coaching Ren Sheets, don't ever look at me to come out. You're staying out there all the time, son. It's crunch time, big boy. You need yeah. to stay on the floor. And now we're going to have a timeout. So our timeouts tonight are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services. Help you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit Metzger Financial Services. Dot com. We'll take it time out as well. Crestview up 41-34 here on WOSN. Forty-one thirty-four. Crestview in front of Bluffton here. Still 541 left to go. Uh, our scoreboard tonight brought to you by Web Insurance Agency. Web Insurance Agency. Serving Allen, or Lima, that is, in Allen County for more than 100 years with offices downtown Lima and Bluffton. There's a nice bucket in the paint. Bluffton able to battle back. A little show and go with the right hand, come back with the left. Brody Summers gets it done. That's his first basket of the evening. Makes this a five point game with under five and a half to play. Sheets with a kick out, corner three on the way. That one doesn't go. And it's Wade Ginther with the miss. Quickly gets this one ahead off the double pump. Taren Boblet able to get in and score. A great job by Boblet going and getting that pass and then controlling his body with the finish. Boblet now with six as Bluffton's been able to cut this quickly to a three point deficit. Knights with a basketball. Wing three, that one might have been partially deflated. Oh, they're going to call that a two. So Harding's going to have his foot on the line. He'll have to settle for two. Still gets him into double digits tonight with 10. Now the trail three, top of the key, that is good. So Blake Summers hits the Lodix Jewelry three-pointer. Yeah, Summers likes two, Randy. He likes two, but he really loves the three. 
Harding gets that entry pass, gets it back. He'll try the three, that one doesn't go. Rebounds tipped straight up. And it is Ginther, Dean Ginther comes away with it ahead for Wade Ginther. Trying to give it to the trail man again, that time it was Bean Ginther. Around Boblet, goes for the three, that one's gonna hit off the iron. Holds the backboard up, and again with three pointers tonight. Brought to you by Lodix Jewelry and Van Wert, offering a wide variety of beautiful earrings, sparkling diamond rings, watches, name brand sunglasses, and more. Now you saw Boblet a little frustrated with himself. Had a good look, but rushed it. He knew he had a big opportunity there, but jumped on it a little bit too quick. That would have been a huge three for Bluffton. So we roll halfway through this final period on our Web Insurance Agency scoreboard, 43-41. Connor Sheets in the corner, keeps his dribble, gets the kick out. Good luck, this is gonna be just a step inside the arc. And the basket is good as Jared Harding stepping up here as of late. Yeah, kinda likes that 18 footer, doesn't he? Just he's, a little bit inside the arc. And he's now got 12. He's bluffed and trying to find something as I believe Brody Summers was trying to get a kick call, but that doesn't go, but Pirates are still able to get the basket and they'll add to that with a quick timeout. So Wade Ginther able to score again. Our timeouts tonight brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. 321 left to play. We'll take a timeout here on WOSN. Forty-five, forty-three, Crestview uh, with the lead here. Three twenty, accounting left to play in this one. Well, you got to give a lot of credit to Bluffton, showing character, trying to come out a little run and jump, and get a steal. Speaking of run and jump, a uh, running and jumping to the elbow is Harding, able to draw the foul. He's going to go to Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. Hey, at the end of the night, we're going to name a Stolle Insurance Hustle Award winner. Check out the highlights of tonight's Stolle Hustle Award winner on the WOSN YouTube page. Hey, every time it looks like Crestview is just gonna pull away, the Bluffton reminds you, hey, even without Merrick Donaldson, we are a tough group. It's doing enough to hang around. Harding misses the first free throw, and that can be undersold. Bluffton doing this tonight without their leading scorer. And Merrick Donaldson at about 16 a game, one of their top rebounders as well. Harding will split the free throws. I asked Dave Bowen, I said, hey, since he's not playing, are you guys going to do the sportsman-like thing and just give them 16 points to start the game? <laughs> Dave said, no, not going to do as it. Much as, as much as we like. We're trying to go off the high glass to avoid the contact, but the move you saw there out of Bean Ginther. That's his first two-point basket. He's got five as the team trade baskets again, make it a one-point game. Well, you see why they like the sophomore had a couple assists in his fourth quarter. Big bucket that time, and now a huge charge from Lufton. A run sheets is gonna be called for the offensive foul. That's gonna be his second, and now Bluffton will get the basketball back with a chance to take the lead. Well, Todd Bobble has just done a great job navigating this basketball game without their big scorer, Merrick Donaldson, and somehow, some way, this Bluffton group they're still swinging that pirate flag. And two players at the same spot, and it's going to end up being a lot of jewelry three-pointer out of Taryn Boblet as Bluffton's back in front. Uh, big-time shooters make big-time shots in big moments. Boblet is big time. And his Pirates lead by a pair, 48-46. Oh. How about the answer is Hayden Parrott. His first basket of the night is a lot of jewelry three-pointer. Uh, Parrott says hit a three, hit a three, hit a three. Big time answer by Crestview. And again, the three-pointers tonight are brought to you by Lodix Jewelry in Van Wert, offering a wide variety of beautiful earrings, sparkling diamond rings, watches, name brand sunglasses, and more. We're in the middle of a Metzger's Financial Services timeout here. 2.07 left to play, and I must admit the one thing that I forgot to do is keep track of timeouts, and I noticed that that is not on either one of the scoreboards as well. Well, Randy Roberts, this turned into a three-point shooting exposition a little bit ago. 
Both teams tickling the twine from long range. Fun time right here and beautiful, beautiful night land. Well, it's been a good one here. We thought it would be 49-48. Big matchup here early on in the Northwest Conference. So ever changing Northwest Conference is what's old is new, what's new is old, who's in, who's out. It's Lipsick, who is who? Right, Lipsick was here, then looks like they're headed back for the uh, Blanchard Valley. Is the Lima Central Catholic returning? Mm, that's right, yeah. Remember that in the fall, big news. So the NWC going through some changes. Look, if any of these guys saw Lima Central Catholic play last Saturday against the Finance, they would say, no, 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 let's rethink this. So Wade Ginther able to get a basket in the paint and then Bluffton will take a Metzger Financial Services timeout. We'll take one as well. Minute 52 left to play as that league ping pongs back and forth. Minute 52 now remaining in this one. We've been treated to a good one tonight in Crestview, 15-49, Bluffton able to battle back and claim the lead. We've mentioned this a couple of times, Crestview led this one by double digits, really Ooh. since the beginning from early on, as the Knights led 20 to seven after one, and now a turnover on a travel, and Bluffton with that one point lead will get the basketball back. Yeah, what with a high post cross set, Harding on the handoff from Ren Sheets, but got a little toesy before he dribbled. Now Bluffton with the trump card up by one. Pirates with it, they'll take their time. Ball into the hands of Ginther right now, trying to shake his defender. Harding on him, pretty tough. Ginther, a dribbling show, and now we're gonna get a whistle, and I believe Harding is gonna be called. Did he get a reach or a hand check? He did. Yeah, Doug Eitzler. Up like he's in the courtroom, saying, Mr. Official, are you sure that's a foul? And Crestview going to have to extend defensively here now, challenge more. This should allow some backdoor cuts to open up for Bluffton. Third foul against Crestview. As Bluffton is going to turn this over. They want to throw it into the backcourt. Let's get the lob to Ginther, but a little far out for him. Couldn't track it down, and Crestview is going to get this back. Yeah, credit Crestview, though, taking away those passing lanes. Making it very tough, had to be a extended pass, a little too far. Usually, partner, you don't want to throw it to your back court there, back corner, throw it to the front court, a little more safer action for Bluffton. New life for Crestview. Parrott gets the inbound in, calls for it back, high post pass to Sheets. Over now Putman, Putman will find Harding. Harding gets into the paint, stops, needs some help. Has it back at the wing. Fake the pass, nearly lost the handle. As Putman's gonna make everyone a little bit nervous with the ball handling, shots up no good. And this one's gonna come back over to Bluffton now under a minute to play. I believe it was John Paul Yoder that got a piece of that one. Harding will commit the foul, that's the fourth. So the next one will send Bluffton to the free throw line for the bonus here, 47.6 to play. I tell you what, Randy, we need to talk to the people at WSN about having an extra camera and just put it on the Moms of Bluffton section in front of us. They are fired up, but they are as nervous as can be. They were sitting right in front of us, and they were fun to watch. Pirates get an inbound from side court. They get this in, Ginther with it. See what Crestview will do. An open player on the baseline, and this ball knocked out of bounds as Harding will reach in. Forces Bluffton to inbound again with 38 and a half seconds to go. Uh, this is where they had trouble inbounding it earlier in this quarter, and Coach Bob going to call timeout, make sure they get it done correctly. Yeah, they're going to talk about it. So with the Metzger Financial Services timeout, we'll step aside as well as Bluffton leads by one with 38 and a half seconds to play.
38 and a half seconds left to play in our Web Insurance Agency. 50 to 49, Bluffton with a one point lead. Trying to stay unbeaten in Northwest Conference play. Pirates will inbound, get it in, and they do as a foul comes here with 35 seconds to play. Now you get the feeling whoever is going to take care of the basketball and make their free throws here, right? Mm -hmm. Is going to win this basketball game with 35.2 left. At one point lead for Bluffton. It really is anybody's game here moving forward. So two Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws coming now. First one is going to be no good as it is Landon Worcester, the man that's going to shoot the free throws. But before he gets the second one, it looks like Crestview wants to use a quick 30-second timeout. And again, timeouts tonight are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services. Help you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. I like the timeout by Doug Etzler because you make Worcester think about it, right? May, missed the first. He's got to think about it now through this timeout on the second. A big free throw right here. Both teams pretty good at the free throw line. Bluffton 72% on the year. Crestview at uh, 68%. But you know what? Those free throws are a little bit different when that clock is ticking down, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, these are a little bit more high pressure free throws. So Worcester has got a three pointer tonight. Will make the second. Doesn't really change what you do if you're Crestview. Makes it a two point game. As Bluffton will come out and extend their defense a little bit. Forces Parrott to touch the ball, which starts the clock. Sheets to sheets, here's Wren, spins, draws a triple team. Stayed on his feet, can't get it off the backboard. Everyone fighting for the basketball and we are going to have, I believe, a reach foul called on Bluffton with 21 seconds to go. It's gonna go on Blake Summers, that is his first. And now another Metzger Financial Services timeout will be taken, so we'll step aside as well. Bluffton still leads by two, down to 21 seconds to play. One seconds left to play. Student section up, ready to go here for Crestview. A little bit of enthusiasm in the building tonight. Inbound goes into Sheets. Now off a screen, Parrot with it. He'll give top of the key. Harding, Harding holds. Parrot lost the handle on the three. Is he going to be fouled? Miles says yes. Now it's going to be a foul on the shooter. What's the rule? Never foul a jump shooter, right? Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, being Gunther, Gunther a little bit too exuberant on the defense, going to contact the arm of Parrott. He's going to go to the line for three. That is three huge Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. Knocks down the first. 75% free throw shooter. You gotta like this sophomore, went to the line and he was like, uh, ah, no, no big deal. I'm gonna bury the first one. It's two more, no trouble with that one. Oh, a little head nod too. Bluffton makes a change as Carey Wright re-enters. Hits the third, no problem. We got to defend here. 52-51, right to the basket, and it rolls in! Quick timeout with 2.8 to play, but what a shot made by Wade Ginther. Oh, Wade Ginther did not wait. Got it and went all the way. And then how about the fortuitous hop, 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 bounce? and falls through. Everyone waiting to see if that was gonna go. If that took another bounce, I don't know what Bluffton would have been able to do in two seconds, but it goes with 2.8. Crestview will use a Metzger Financial Services timeout. Now the Knights have to draw something up to go to the length of the floor in 2.8 seconds. Two 
2.8 to play as we take a look at the replay and the celebration as Bluffton trying to get a huge win tonight in the Northwest Conference. Harding will do the inbounding. He's got movement. He'll have to throw this in, gets it in. Back to Harding. Harding in the front court from half court, lets it go, doesn't pick it. And your final tonight here in Exler Gymnasium. We'll see the Bluffton Pirates get a huge win. They stay undefeated in the Northwest Conference and go to nine and one as they knock off the Crestview Knights. 53 to 52. We will take a timeout. When we come back, we'll check in with our Miles Halliday down on the floor with our Stolly Insurance Hustle Award winner when we return. Oh, what a night tonight. Bluffton gets the win over Crestview, 53-52, and uh, big game-winning shots make it easy to select a Stolly Insurance Hustle Award winner. Hustling for that game winner's Wade Ginther. He's down on the floor with our Miles Holiday. Uh, Wade, coast to coast at the buzzer. Get it done. Walk us through that moment uh, when you were watching it bounce on the rim before it went in. Yeah, I was just, I was watching. I was just hoping it went in, but I'm just glad my coaches put me in the Right spot, attack downhill, and took it. I'm glad I went in, but I give credit to my teammates, and I could have done a foul with them, and coaches were great, and just, I'm glad I went in. <laughs> have you ever been hugged that much after a game? I don't think so. I think, I think that'll be all, all of them, but yeah, yeah. No doubt you're going to go in the locker room and tell Coach Boblet that you had out that was going in, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. It never crossed my mind. It was going in, yeah. Uh, you guys were really behind in that first quarter, kind of struggling. What did you guys do to get back in this basketball game? Yeah, I think we just we picked it up on defense a little bit. I mean, they got two bigs, run sheets, and both sheets, and they're they're monsters down low. But I think we we uh, got them and uh, we boxed out. I think better, put some bodies on them, and I think we ran more. And I think we were just confident and let the game come to us. And I'm glad we win and great great team win. Yeah, a great, a great win like this. Uh, what can it do for you guys moving forward? Yeah. Uh, I mean, a win like this will, can carry uh, momentum into our next games, and uh, we're missing Merrick, uh, a great player, great teammate, and that one's for him. Fantastic. Last thing for you, half-court shot. Let's go for, to that basket. Nobody's made it this year. Can you make it? I don't know. No promises, but I'll try. If anyone can, it's him. He's been magical tonight. Oh, nice job. Congratulations. What a great win, Randy. He was a hustle dude. Yeah, definitely, as we said, hustled for that game winner. He gets it with 2.8 seconds left to play. So Bluffton with the win again, improves to 9-1, 3-0 in the Northwest Conference. Crestview, who has been up and down here the last five games, falls to 8-5 and five and 1-2. and two. We want to thank everyone for making our night possible here at uh, Crestview. Starts with Austin Fleming, the uh, AD here at Crestview. Appreciate each and every time that uh, we've been here to uh, Crestview. want to thank Eric Kerbin for the work he's done directing us. And of course, Abby Beck for all the work behind the camera. We always, we don't get to see Abby all that often, but we always enjoy the heck out of it each and every time we see her smiling face. So 53-52 again is that final for my partner, Miles Holiday and our entire WOSN crew. I'm Randy Roberts. Thanks for watching everyone.